What's up guys, Kane here with XBLA fans. I just wanted to kind of do a quick guide to Punch Club. Uh, I just finished my first playthrough of the game. It took me probably pretty long, but I was also trying to trying to, trying to figure out how the game works. Uh, there was a lot of, this is a very deep game. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of try to give you guys a guide on how not to suck at Punch Club. Um, Hopefully this is useful to you guys. I'm gonna try to keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible. However, there are some things that you guys need to know pretty early on because your early game is very much gonna affect your late game, especially if you're trying to go for the 100 days achievement. Now I'm gonna straight up say it, you're gonna have to play this game multiple times. So don't try to go for the 100 days achievement until you really understand the game. It's gonna help you out a lot. So, in general though, there are three different ways to build your character late game. You can either go the bear route, the tiger route, or the turtle route. I went the turtle route, I do not recommend it. It is very much late game focused. It takes a while to get it to kind of pay off. When it does start to pay off, you're almost unstoppable. But for the majority of the early game, I felt pretty worthless. Uh, just kind of having read up on everything, I would probably recommend the Tiger Route, which is the Agility Focus, the Bear Route being the Strength Focus, and the Turtle Route being Stamina Focus. Um, and even when you start off on the game, you kind of got to know this ahead of time, because on your first day, you're going to basically be asked a couple things, and you're going to end up picking your first starting trait. So strong arms kind of lets you have really good punches, strong legs, really good kicks and whatnot. And skinny guy is just absolutely amazing if you happen to be going the tiger route, whereas it's worthless for almost everything else. Uh, if you're going to go for the, the tiger route, definitely pick up skinny guy. If you're going to go for bear or turtle, I'd probably recommend strong arms myself. So that's probably optimal. Now a couple things you need to know just when you start playing this game is you need to know just how to uh, kind of level your character. So you're going to want to very much focus on a couple different attributes. So instead of trying to do all three, you need to focus on one primary attribute and probably one secondary attribute. So if you're going turtle, you want to go stamina and strength. If you're going bear, you want to go strength with stamina. If you're going tiger, this is why I recommend tiger, you can literally not even care about strength. You want to go agility and then you want to go stamina so tiger is one of the better ones because you don't even need to bother with strength the majority of your damage is going to come from other places which is just absolutely fantastic so a couple things that you need to know early on though is you need to be focused on maximizing your time and your money basically so like Anything you do needs to be done as efficiently as possible. And the best way to stay efficient is to focus on doing one thing at a time. So you're not going to live your life like a normal human being. You're not going to, you know, go to the gym previously, you know, and work out for an hour and then go, you know, hit up food and then go to your job and then grab more food and then come back to your job. You don't really want to do it like that unless you absolutely have to. You want to be just slamming one skill and one you know thing at a time so you know like i'll top off all my stats i'll go to the gym i'll stay at the gym until i have to leave and then i'll come back and get food and you know what sometimes i might just go straight back to the gym because it's pretty much almost always better to work out at the gym even though it costs you that ten dollars to get in but you definitely want to be cognizant of the fact that ten dollars early on does cost a good bit so you want to make sure that you're kind of doing specific things with a purpose. So one thing you do need to know though is that early on you want to make sure that you are actually taking the uh, sparring and the pad training options from Silver. These are actually super useful because they're going to help you level your skills and you need to get these skills. Now. The skill tree will eventually become more expensive as you continue to unlock things. So you need to make sure that you are continuing down the skill tree for whatever route you've taken instead of, you know, just kind of haphazardly grabbing things because it gets more and more expensive each thing you grab. So you want to be able to get as deep down the line as quick as possible. So you want to make sure that you're doing this with a purpose. I'm not going to go through each individual build and each individual skill tree. 
because that is a video in of itself. If you guys would like that, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, there are other people who've kind of already done that. I'm sure you can find some good stuff up on the Steam pages. Um, but as far as that stuff goes, make sure that you are doing it with a purpose. Now, even when you start on day one, you need to be thinking about this because you're going to either start with block or start with dodge. If you happen to be going the tiger route, you definitely want to make sure you start with dodge instead of starting with block. So it may even be worth just restarting your game if you don't happen to get the right skill. And that's something that Ida was not aware of. I actually had no block on my turtle run for the longest time and I was wondering why I was having problems. Then I realized, oh, I didn't get that skill at the start. I had to go back and buy it and it was not <laughs> the cheapest thing at the time because I'd already gone pretty far down my tree. So that's just an example of something that you want to not make the same mistake I did. Now there's a few things you want to know about this game uh, and that's just kind of how, where to spend your money. So meat is typically going to be your most efficient kind of food product. Um, two of them can take you from basically nothing to full and that's huge. It's super super effective. However, there are occasionally times when small meals are better. If you need more mood and you need more of a health benefit, pizzas are probably the way to go. Frozen pizzas, that is, because they are cheap, but they really only have a slight, um, slightly reduced hunger benefit. But they will give you basically double the amount of mood and health, and that's super, super useful. Shrimp pizza in particular, though, if you're looking for mood, is one of the best options because you really don't want to have to waste time resting uh, and using your TV because that's just not really an optimal solution so especially early on it may feel like money's a constraint but that's not gonna be the case as you get deeper into this game this game has a very kind of clear early and like late game uh, during the early game, money is definitely your big concern. During the late game, it's going to be more about time. During the late game, you're going to be, you know, taking the bus everywhere. You're going to be doing just everything you can to just kind of keep doing that stuff. Now, one thing that's kind of cool about this game, and you may not realize at first, is while you can only have X amount of skills active, depending on how many slots you have, you can have literally as many uh, perks as possible. So you can just overload yourself on perks. Uh, you can have all of them active at once and that's super cool. And most of the time on skills and perks, you don't need to have the lower version as the prerequisite. Um, that may not be the case if it just happens to line up on the thing. But I know for example, I got Meat Runner 1 and then Meat Runner 3 or whatnot without ever getting two. And that's super, super useful. So stuff like that is pretty cool. So you can kind of do that. Um, one thing you do need to think about is when you're grabbing perks such as Meat Runner, is you need to make sure you have the skills you know, ready and ready to lock. However, one cool thing about this game is you can actually just buy a potion to get you those last two levels. And while the potions are mostly just a waste of money, that is the instance where it's actually super, super useful. So you're going to be able to just kind of level yourself from, you know, 11 to 13 to be able to lock in that stat. And when you lock in that stat, you can now start to focus on the other one that you need to up a little bit. And that's super useful, especially as you head toward the late game. Now, as far as working out, that's one thing that's kind of arguable from what I've seen online. Some people say it's worth getting Roy's attention. Other people say you might as well just ignore him but in general is best to exercise at the gym because early on you're not going to ever really have enough money to buy gym equipment. Um, if you do start carrying over 150 bucks, you're probably going to get mugged. And that's going to be the case until you have up to about level 17 total. Uh, when you have 17 levels across your different skills, you're probably not going to see any more muggings. And that's something you're going to need to be aware of if you're trying to get the achievements for you know defeating the muggers as well as something you got to think about when you're not trying to fight muggers. If, you, if you're trying to just spend money, you want to be super careful that you don't accidentally carry over 150 bucks because you will probably get mugged. And early on, you will probably get your butt kicked. So as far as that stuff, that's something you need to be thinking about. Now, if you are working at, at the gym, and let's just say you already do have the home equipment, one thing you need to know 
is that the, the equipment, like the treadmill, is identical from the two locations. So if you're gonna work out at the gym and you wanna use the treadmill when you get home and at the gym, you need to start working out on the treadmill. That's the first thing you should do. That way the cool down will be ready when you actually do leave the gym and you head home. And that's something that's super, super useful. Now, one thing you should probably think about is, as well is when you're gonna have a fight, you need to be thinking about the fact that you need to actually take the fight before the end of the day because otherwise you're gonna be fighting with lower stats. Now, one of the cool things about these fights though is that you travel instantly from location to location. You don't actually have to you know, go to that location. So that's super useful in particular with like the rookie league fights and the ultimate fights is that you're gonna just teleport to those locations. So you can use the travel to your advantage a little bit if you plan things out accordingly. Now, uh, one thing that's super useful to know is when you are close to leveling up a stat near the end of the day, it might be best not to because you lose nine points in each level of your stat per day. So if you happen to be level 10, you're gonna be losing 90. If you're gonna be level you know, 11, you're gonna be losing 99. So you're basically just leveling up nine points to just lose them anyway, which is kind of pointless if you think about it. So there's better ways to use your time. And some of this stuff is not really well written down in the game. It's not super apparent because you know most of the time you're seeing just those little, little circles and half circles and stuff. So this is a lot of stuff that you kind of have to read about online. So it's kind of why I'm trying to just distill all this in as like quick as possible to you guys and just kind of give you the basics that you need just so you don't have some of the problems I ran into.